All right. So this morning we're going to do, as I said, we're going to do some basic stuff in R, some EDA stuff we didn't do yesterday, exploratory data analysis stuff we didn't do yesterday. Um, and we are going to, so this by the end of this lecture, you will learn to read tables into R and merge tables. You will learn to create a variety of publication quality plots using ggplot and use them to explore data. And you will learn to fit a binary response variable using GLM. Um, so I think I'll talk a bit more about, I don't know how you want to record this meeting, Mia, because this morning it's it's all going to be like a lab. The whole thing is going to be like a lab. So All right. Okay, so uh, if that's the case, then let me talk a little bit about uh, generalized linear models now, okay? So the goal of a model is to fit your data and it's to fit it accurately. So the model you pick has to fit the distribution of your data. What that means in stats is when you pick a certain family of models and um, what's left behind after you fit the model should follow the specifications of that statistical framework. So if you're fitting a line um, to your model, uh, to your data, then the leftover component, the residuals at epsilon, that has to follow a normal distribution. If it doesn't, then you know statistically, it's not satisfying the uh, requirements of model fit and your model fit may not be good. And, and there are statistical tools to estimate goodness of fit. I had a, um, you know, so what is a linear model? What does what the shape of a linear model look like? What are you fitting? What is that thing you fit? A straight line. Okay. So what kind of data is not going to fit a linear model? For example. Yeah, like an exponent, some kinds of exponentials. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Straight up survival curves because a line can go from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? And if you try to fit uh, something that's like a survival curve, you know, or something that's like a mm, probability of success, like a coin toss model you're gonna get negative values. That's not correct, right? Um, also, if you have any kind of polynomial, which means like parabolas, you know, like anything with curves in it, any kind of inflections, these are all nonlinear. I had a mentor in school who said, dividing models into linear and nonlinear models was said like saying, the zoo is made up of elephants and non-elephants, okay? It's like nonlinear, there's a lot of different shapes hiding in there. So the visualization of your data is going to help you figure out what kind of models to fit. But also in genomic applications or any kind of mm, community standard assay, usually the field has done the statistical legwork to figure out what kind of model best fits the data. Okay, so when we went from microarray data to next generation sequencing data, there were a lot of informatics papers and a lot of statistical foundations were laid into say, what kind of model does this data fit, right? Um, and for, um, for NGS data, which is next generation sequencing data, that turned out to be Poisson models because you are generating counts. They're not continuous values. It's not like the temperature went up, the temperature went down. It's like counts. How many reads did you get, right? Um, and so we have this, um, and then the question is, how do you fit it, right? So for some kinds of models, there are very clean numeric solutions, like fitting a line. There's a very clean numeric solution. There is a second class of models called generalized linear models, which means that if you apply some kind of transform to it, you can fit it with sort of a line, right? So it's like a log linear model. If you apply a logarithm to it, you could fit it. Um, so those are generalized linear models. And then you have everything that does not fit the bill, right? So you can think of it roughly as sort of elephants, things that can be coerced into elephants and other stuff, right? And for the other stuff, there are different custom solutions. So if it's a parabola, then there's a different formula. If you know there are numerical approximation, there are some things for which you can't get a perfect fit, 
So you have to use some kind of computational iterative method to fit the model parameters. What do we mean by model parameters? If you remember that equation I showed you yesterday, you had that interest, you know, like expression equals beta zero plus beta one disease term plus beta two, whatever, sex, beta three, batch. Um, so you are fitting the model parameters are the betas. That's what you're fitting, right? Um, and then and then you can see if those betas go up or those betas go down or whatever. So that's what model fitting is. Um, why do we care about generalized linear models? Because there's a lot of count-based data that we work with in genomics. And for that, we use generalized linear models to fit it. And tools such as edge R, which do differential expression analysis, are using generalized linear models under the hood. Okay. So even if you're using edge R, you have to kind of appreciate, like, why can't I take RNA data and just fit a line to it, right? It's LM. I learned that. I can apply it. No. For any kind of new kind of data, you have to see if the field has identified what kind of statistical model to fit. And usually when these software tools are published, you know, like peer reviewed software tools, be careful of non peer reviewed software tools. Like somebody has got something that does something unless you have the know how to judge whether it's accuracy or you have a card carrying, you know, somebody who knows how to like, look at the stats or whatever and tell you this is legit. Don't use it in your work. Right. Things like EDGAR, they have been published and they kind of defend their work. They test how it works with simulated data. So anyway, this is why you should kind of know what these are. And uh, today as part of the lab, we're gonna fit a very simple kind of generalized linear model using an R function called GLM, generalized linear model. Um, and the two kinds of data that we work with in sort of biomedical research and our kind of line of work is binomial data, right? Uh, probabilistic data, which is the survival curves fit into that. Um, and the second is count-based data, which is sequencing-based data, right? So if you are working with mass spectrometry data, you know, and you have this problem, I have measured, you know, a thousand proteins and I need to say, X proteins were differentially expressed between condition A and B, you know, go see what is, what is the, you know, pick me like a flagship paper in your field, go look at what is the method that they use in there, what software are they using, right? And then look up what, look up the paper for that software, at least read the abstract, right? To know roughly what they're saying about it. Don't just assume that anything you pick is going to fit to your data type. Okay, that's my spiel. Okay, so now we are going to open up. Um, there's nothing much happening in the slides this time. So we're gonna open up, um, I'm gonna try to end the show.